Okay. So, um, this is, I, I have to begin this story by saying that this is in no way um, meaning to start a fight or pick a fight with somebody. Rather, it it's ends up it as a as sort of maybe a cute ending. Um, but anyways, uh, this is this is this is going to be fun. Um, so in January of this year, um, a lot of people started reaching out to us. Uh, it was probably actually December of last year. A lot of people started reaching out to us because a very famous YouTuber, um, Mr. Tyler Hoovey, uh, Tyler Hoover of Hoovey's Garage purchased um, a pair of Lamborghinis and he made it known that he bought uh, these cars uh, for a very good deal. Um, I guess he was shocked at even this deal. And um, everybody was commenting in his videos. And, and listen, Tyler is, uh, Hoovy's Garage is, is one of the bigger automotive YouTubers um, online. I think he has like 1.7 million subscribers or something like that. So he's a big guy. And I've actually spoken to him before, but I've never really truly worked with him. Uh, Ed Bolian, who's a dear friend of ours, and we've been on the VinWiki channel, uh, introduced me to him to help with a Murcielago transaction. There was a trade, and I was selling Ed a car, which is actually another great story about selling Ed um, probably the worst Lamborghinis that he's ever purchased, uh, but that'll be a separate story. And um, so I had known Tyler, and, and everybody started tagging Curated and Curated TV and me and, and anything that Tyler was posting about these Lamborghinis. And it was a 1997 uh, Lamborghini Diablo Roadster, a titanium car uh, over black interior. Uh, 97 and a half, because uh, if, if I remember correctly, it's an airbag car, but it has the smaller 17 inch wheels. So in 1998, uh, Lamborghini started producing 18 inch wheels. But if you bought an SV that was from 96 or 97, and same with a Roadster, they looked identical, but they were actually smaller wheels. So they were 17 inch uh, wheels. Um, so, so definitely a nice car, not the most desirable of Diablo uh, Roadster models. Um, and I believe it was like 13,000 miles. So not low miles, but not high miles. And uh, a 1989 Countach Anniversario, Anniversary. Uh, 25th car, uh, pearl white, beautiful color on red interior. And again, similar miles, not super low. And uh, everybody was just saying, hey, you got to try to buy these cars. You got to, and, and guess what? Um, Tyler actually reached out to us uh, to give a, our opinion of values for the cars. Um, he had brought them to, to, I think it was CarMax to get a value and ended up through Ed reaching out to us to give him an appropriate value. So we did a video with him and he was awesome to work with. And then one day he reached out to me, uh, January 13th or 14th, I had to go back through some messages. Um, and um, a ba basically he wanted to sell the Diablo. And, and I was you know, excited. Uh, we had been back and forth on price. I thought the car looked really great. It didn't have a wing. And I actually like the early Diablo Roadsters without a wing. I think the, it makes the rear end look really wide. And the car hadn't been advertised in years, so it was an interesting car. It did need some work. He was very, very transparent. He sent me a ton of photos. He even sent me the videos where his mechanic, I guess the wizard, was going through the car and you know finding all the problems. So as a seller, he was probably one of the most transparent sellers you could ever ask for. Um, Carfax checked out, didn't look like the car had paintwork. It needed some service items. And it's funny because a lot of people were sending us messages that we need to save these cars from Tyler Hoover, uh, Tyler Hoover destroying them. And uh, that his, you know, whatever, he was gonna be cheap and not fix these cars right. And I guess that is his MO um, on his garage is, you know, uh, you know, trying to fix things for small prices, etc. So I basically, you know, we went back and forth and we agreed on a number and, and basically I, you know, my, I think my last exchange was him. Great. Congrats. We have a deal. Send us a copy of the title and we'll process the transaction. And, and typically the way it works, we get a copy of the front and back of the title. We create a purchase agreement and within 24 to 48 hours, we're paying for the car. We pick up the car obviously. And then, and then, you know, we go through the car and probably for two to three weeks, I would say is what the car needed in terms of work 
um, you know, a service, you know, some touch-ups. I think it needed fresh tires. So I was excited to have new inventory and maybe do some YouTube stories uh, with uh, Tyler. And that was one of the fun things that we talked about. And guess what? Um, a few days go by and Tyler says, you know what, John, I'm so sorry. I have to back out of the deal. I just, I fell in love with the Diablo. And you know, as a passionate guy, um, I had to say that I understood like Diablos, I love them. They're great cars. He started driving it. He said it was probably the most comfortable Lamborghini of his Lamborghinis. And uh, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna keep this car, but I'm gonna keep in touch with you because if, if I ever do s decide to sell it or I decide to sell this Countach, I'm gonna call you. So another probably 30 days have gone by. And this is also in a period where this year it's been difficult to find inventory. There's not a lot of sellers. Um, the classic car market is, is very hot. Things are selling. Um, so I hadn't had a lot of in inventory and I was looking for great Countaches and great Diablos, which are part of our DNA. And actually in this process, Tyler had mentioned us a few times in his YouTube videos as the go-to guys and gurus of these cars, which was greatly appreciated. So little time goes by and he reaches out to me again uh, through Facebook and, and says, hey, I think I've decided I've got to pay some bills or whatever. And I think I've decided I'm going to sell the Countach. And very excited again. I said, amazing. Um, and uh, was very, very happy. And, you know, we went back and forth and, and, you know, on price. And again, he sent me all the photos and all the little things that weren't, you know, and, and there were some concerns. The AC blower was not working at the time. And AC, fixing the AC on a Countach can get very expensive quick. It, it can also be an easy fix. It could be something like a fuse, um, but you can't bet on that when you're buying a car for inventory. You have to understand that it could be $10,000 very quickly uh, for these services. Um, but again, Lamborghinis are great cars. Diablos and Countaches are chain driven. So I'm not worried about pulling the engine as long as there's no major leaks. Um, let's face it, they're older cars, so there are minor leaks and things that are sweating. But as long as there's no, no major leaks, as long as the cars have been serviced, I'm not that scared of like a major issue besides a clutch. You do have to pull the engine out uh, on both Diablo, uh, Countach, and Murcielago to change the clutch. So that can get very expensive. We're talking $10,000 to $15,000 sometimes. And when the engine is out, um, and it actually has to come out. It's, it's not like you're dropping the engine like a Testarossa or a 355. It actually has to be pulled out through the car um, with the gearbox and everything comes out all at once. So you have to use like a cherry picker and it's, it's a lot of work. And when you have the engine out, you should do everything else around it. I mean, really, you shouldn't just change the clutch and put it back in. So again, I was trusting his, I would say his judgment of the cars and his mechanics judgment of the cars but besides that it looked like a very nice car very honest car um not the lowest mileage but again a perfect driver for somebody in a really nice car so we went back and forth and we were probably about a thousand dollars apart on price and i was being you know it was like principal to me because he had backed out of the first deal and i was a little upset but again it was through passion and i said okay no it's fine don't worry and he was apologetic but now I'm saying, you know what, listen, Tyler, this is the price. Like, you got to work with me here. This, this could start to get expensive for me. I'm the one that's actually taking the risk. This is what I could ask. So you see my margins. It's not huge margins. Um, and I think I'm giving you a fair number. And he finally said, okay, I think we have a deal. I think blah, blah, blah. So we went back and forth. And I finally said, you know what, I'm not going to argue with you anymore over a couple thousand. Let's just do it. And he disappeared. And I think a couple days went by or a week went by and I'm like, Hey, like what's going on? And he just tells me, man, I am so sorry. I am, you know, I just, I just, I'm going to keep the car. I can't do it. I'm going to take a loan. I'm going to the credit, you know, credit bureau or whatever it was, a uh, credit facility. And I'm going to take a loan on my Mercia Lago and, and I'm not going to sell you the car. And I have to be honest, I was pretty pissed. Um, you know, my immediate reaction was that, and we get this a lot, and it's actually pretty frustrating. So we have, in many ways, and I say this sincerely, 
because we're so focused on Diablos and Countaches, we've sort of set the market sometimes, and people, a lot of people come to us, dealers and collectors, of what's the value. And it gets very frustrating because people will ask us the value and I'll say, I want to buy the car, and then they go take that number and they go shop that number to try to get 5,000 more or 10,000 more. And many times I tell people, hey, listen, just tell me what you want and let's come up to a fair number. The more you shop the car, the less I really want it because then it's not like, any discovery, it's, you know, it's, it's been shopped around. Um, and it becomes sort of frustrating. I mean, you, you, we're the ones that are helping people find values and then, you know, someone ends up buying it for $1,000 more. And, and I was really upset at first because I figured this is what Tyler's doing. He is shop, he's taking my prices and he's shopping them or he's gonna sell them to somebody else and try to get more money. So I was a little bummed. Um, I was frustrated. I did like the Countach. I, I did like the Diablo. Um, I did actually have a client that would have been perfect for the Countach. So, you know, I was a little annoyed and um, I sort of was like, screw that guy. Like, I, 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 I'm not, I don't want to talk to him anymore. I don't want to work with him. Um, but then uh, through Ed and through uh, basically some other channels, realized that I was going to have to work with Tyler again on Car Trek and I was gonna have to give a valuation on his cars on CarTrack. And you know, my immediate reaction was, I just wanted to destroy the value of his SLS. He has a Mercedes SLS that he used for CarTrack. And I realized quickly upon finally meeting him in person and talking to him, and I had met him a few years ago at Amelia Island, but I realized in the past couple of weeks with Amelia Island and talking back and forth with him, that he really is a nice guy um, and he's really a passionate guy. And um, it was funny because I had never really watched Hoovy's Garage too much. Um, I had watched it when he had first bought the Lamborghinis. But I started watching some of the Car Trek videos and some of his videos. And sort of his story reminded me of my story of sort of like, you know, going through struggles and meeting, you know, shitty people in the car dealership world and you know and then eventually through your passion finding something that works for you and and being you know maybe somewhat successful or su he's been very successful at what he does and i really sort of started to like become a fan of his and really like him so it, it's it's sort of funny for me to say but i'm actually really glad that he didn't sell me the diablo and i'm really glad that he didn't sell me the countach um and i, I definitely um upon our filming of car trek i was probably a little rude to him um, and, and was, was very critical of his SLS. And I shouldn't have been um, because after meeting him and talking to him, I realized he's really a passionate guy like us, uh, like our entire team and like myself and really sincerely just wanted to keep what was his poster car, the Countach, and keep the Diablo, which is something that he loved to drive. And I will say is as I do get older um, and I work with a lot of clients, I find myself sometimes arguing or negotiating against myself because I am passionate about these cars. Um, you know, someone asked me, what should I do? Should I sell my Countach or should I sell my Diablo? Now, as a car dealer, I want to say, yes, <laughs> of course, sell them to me, you know? But in the reality, I do believe in the values. Um, and I will say, since I was negotiating with Tyler on the cars, the cars have gone up even more. Um, in value, so he's, he did a he did a great deal. He, uh, I did a horrible deal for us, but um, and and I, I I my my passionate side wants people to keep their cars, enjoy them, and that is, I would say, Tyler Hoover embodies uh, the next generation of collectors, guys that dreamed about these cars. They're using the cars, they're enjoying the cars, and it's also at the same time a potential investment for them. I can't get mad, even though I did hate Tyler Hoover for uh, a few days. Uh, definitely uh, congratulate him on his success and uh, hopefully we'll continue to work with him and maybe one day have the opportunity of buying his Diablo and his Countach.